Sorry, Randy. Check, check, check. Mic check. I've been hearing myself this whole time. <laughs> so I think I'm good. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Can We Talk? This is your boy, Eric, and I'm here with the usual suspects, Nicole and Anthony. What's up? We're missing Shana today, but it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. We got some good news, though. It, Wakanda forever. Wakanda forever, and happy birthday to yes. our one and only Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank happy you. Happy 25th birthday. 25th? Guess what? Yeah, You're I halfway know. to 50, like I will tell you for the third time since yep. I've seen you today. Right. And you know, about 100 years ago, people didn't live past uh, 30. So you, you're so you, you don't know, man, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little on the positive. I'm a black man. I hit 25. Right. I pay my own bills. Got a your place. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm living, man. I'm winning. So with that being said, we got to do some celebratory shots. But Nicole, she's been drinking all, uh, all day. So I you, have a really awesome story to tell you guys. Yo, but sh- I agreed out. to do it drunk. I and gotta, I've been drinking since 1030 this morning. I got to say oh this. I Shout know. out to Comedy Central Drunk History because they inspired Nicole to do a drunk retelling of a powerful story. And I'm looking forward to every moment of this. Like, first off, you have mimosas. When are we? When are we gonna videotape you guys reenacting my version of the story, though? Oh, because that would be the better that's part. That's true. Of it. You gotta get a few drinks with us. The reenactment of the reenactment. That's that's something I haven't heard of, and we might have to do that <laughs> next show. We gonna drink or what? Oh man? yeah, let's Did take you get Oh yeah, shot? it's Anthony's oh, birthday. Shoot. Oh, Randy, we got to get you. Randy you got his own Here, drink. You can, take, you can take this. Right? No, why don't you drink with me? Do you right, want to sip of my drink? No, I'm not feeling well. I'm going to pass on the booze. Okay. All right, okay. everybody. Cheers, though. Cheers to Anthony's Cheers 25th to Anthony, birthday. Cheers to Anthony, halfway to 50. Hey. Wakanda forever. Wakanda <laughs> forever. Detroit forever. Detroit forever. Oh, that went down. <laughs> it was kind of rough. What did you Sorry. get, Eric? This was uh, vodka. You got the Tito's. Did you like the Tito's? Have you ever had Tito's? Because last time I saw you, you were having that um, Don't embarrass tequila me. rose. Put some respect on my name. The tequila rose. Put some respect Straight on up my the name. Creamiest, the creamiest yeah, of shots. creamy. And I'm hey, like, man. what are you doing? Shana got the smoke last episode. You don't want the smoke this episode. <laughs> you should have seen him last episode. You don't want that smoke this episode. I know. I've only heard about it, and I'm afraid to Hey, shout out to Shana, man. My male ego got in the way a bit. It was good. It, it made an entertaining podcast, for sure. Yeah. But you know what happens? You know, when in the heat of the moment, you know, when we're discussing things, it happens. So it, happens. it is what it is. So let's get into, I guess we can get into my segment, current events. Um, for current events, we didn't get to go over what we talked about last week at the end. I want to talk about the young ladies from the Warren High School. Is it Fitzgerald High School? Oh, <gasps> yes. That? That's true so crime. These were really, and they seemed like intelligent young ladies, both straight A students. But they were fighting over a man. And they were fighting over a little a boy. They're fighting over a boy. One yeah, girl a boy. got jealous Thank over you. something, stabbed the girl in the chest, punctured her heart. And was running after pill. her and laughing about and it. Laughing about it. Like, what is going on? First off, I don't know. I'm thinking like high school relationships. Is it even worth it? Like, these, y'all, you're probably going to date, date them for like yeah, a but month. You, when you're in high school, you don't think about that, man. Yeah. You remember, these, these, Honestly, these, these people like, are still young. In your high school years, you know everything. Right. Right. Your parents don't. Can't tell you shit. It's true. But I just feel bad for like the family of both the victim and, and the, the suspect because think about it, these are two lives that are now forever changed. One girl is gone, the other she is going to be in jail for probably the rest of her life, and just to be just being young and dumb, and that that's just very unfortunate. Sad thing is though, you know everything. I know. Because right. I knew yeah, everything. I was like, I was like that, that too. I was like, you can't tell me nothing. I know. I know this world. I'm 16 oh, years old. My mama slapped me in the mouth a couple times because <laughs> I we've had it. I could I could picture you being like feisty and just like hey, I'm not a nice person. I did I didn't need the straight up slap. I just got the threat. <laughs> Next time you sass me, I'm gonna pop you. All, See, of, all of a sudden, something happened to my mouth where I couldn't <laughs> talk anymore, and then I just went like this. Hey, but it's something about like black parents. Like you know, it's just like they gave you a look. And you just know not to do it. Oh, right? listen, so, listen. Some my white parents, parents, some were, white parents too, yeah. were tough enough. My dad had yeah. raised me very well, but it took a lot of, not force, but. Yeah. So you never got like spanked he, or, or, or I was, whooped. I was spanked bare ass before. Uh-huh. Um, 
but that's because I ran away at the age of six, oh. and they found Wait, me. Say allegedly. Alle- in these, allegedly. In this day and age, right. let's, let's We don't want to incriminate anyone. Allegedly, I was spanked bare ass by my own parents. Right, but right. No, mm. my dad's a scary man. If he looks you straight in the eyes and tells you how mad he is, that brings mm. tears to my eyes. Mm. I am so sensitive. And then I'm like, okay, I'll listen. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to. It's nothing like the disappointment from a parent, though. Yeah. That's always the saddest and that's thing. What, it is. That's what the anger came out of was disappointment right. through him. And mm. you could see that, and you just didn't do it again. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's like I think that's the worst thing. Like Beyond getting a whooping, like the disappointment you bring to your parents because you want to succeed and make them proud, but right. when you make them up disappointed, it, it hurts. I know, man. It's, 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 it brings many of, of tears, you know, d- doing things I knew I shouldn't have done. But um, what else? Yeah, it is what it is. Oh, I do want to talk about the the Judge Kavanaugh a situation. So what did he do? All right. So I guess allegedly you could say this. So okay. as you may as you may know, he's uh, he was nominated for Supreme Court. From Donald Trump, right? So they're going through the confirmation hearings and all that. I think they passed the confirmation hearing stage like two weeks ago. But there's a, an, an allegation was brought up saying that he sexually assaulted a girl back in high school. And so now she's coming to testify next week to Congress um, about the situation. And so this is like a, they're showing us a clear character flaw. Like okay. this guy, you know, he's, he's, you know, it's alleged. It's alleged, though, so it's kind of hard to say. This is Clarence Thomas all over again. Right. Randy, all I can hear is the crackling of your <laughs> snacks. Yeah, yeah. Let Randy eat. Let pull, Randy pull back, man. You, you got to eat. Saying? Are you okay? My microphone's muted. <laughs> we can hear it, though. Let Randy eat his snacks. <laughs> it's all right, Randy. It's all right, Randy. So, have y'all been listening to it? Have y'all paid attention to the Kavanaugh no. situation? Uh, not really. I don't really. I mean, I ca- I do care. I do care, but yeah. I just yeah, I just know it's going to upset me. Ditto. I mean, so in this, in this situation... What do you think should happen? So if the la- allegations said are ditto. true. She said ditto. Yeah, as in ditto. Okay, all right. Go ahead. No, <laughs> so I hear you. If, the alle- if the allegations are true, do you think this should s- prevent him from being a Supreme Court justice? So, um. And again, this was high school. Like, this guy's in his, you know, yeah, late 50s. But you, yeah, you got to compare this to the birth of a nation thing, too. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, Nate Turner was um uh he he was convicted of um allegedly um uh, raping a um a white woman Nate Turner Nate Nate Parker Nate, Nate Parker Nate, is a black man who made a film about right, Nate Nat Turner, Turner Nat Turner who Nat was Turner. was up for uh, Oscar recognition but all that came crashing down with when a uh, allegation he was convicted of from the college came back uh, mm-hmm. where he um you know allegedly raped a woman who was white and she had committed suicide not too long after yeah so you got you got to look at it as that you do need to pay for for your crimes, but I guess I don't I don't want to hear about statute of limitations because there is no statute of limitations on grief. I agree, and it it can, it can be a murky line. I think there does need to be some punishment. Yes, yeah, and I agree. I think especially in this day and age, it's more than necessary to go ahead and, and you know fully investigate this because first off, he's running. He's going to be nominated for the highest court of the land, right? And you don't want any more character flaws or issues like this. To be making decisions about cases that can be, you know, can be influenced by you know sexual assault or something in the future. You never know. Um, so I think in this situation, if things play out the way that I think they will, I'm hoping that he doesn't get to, uh, get confirmed. But knowing mm-hmm. the Republicans, they don't care. That's a whole other story. But um, I mean, I didn't want to go too deep into the uh, the current events for this week because I know we got a good story coming up with, with well, Nicole. It's gonna quick, be quick two the cents, worst though. story ever. Yeah. You want to do a two cent? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I, I gave that to Anthony. I said, I'm not in charge. You do your two cents so I can sit no. here and study a little bit more before I butcher this story. Okay, so two things. One quick thing. I finally saw Black Klansman. Oh, what, what did you think? I enjoyed it. Um, yeah. I enjoyed it. It was very good. In the beginning, I thought it was a little shaky. Like I yeah. said, okay, this, this film is trying to find a tone here. Like, is it comedic? Is it serious? Right. Um, I think the actors did well, you know. Um, I think his name is John David John David Washington. John David Washington, yeah. Adam Driver, you know, they were all good. Um, towards the end, it had a powerful finish. I loved, I loved the the end montage. Man, of just comp- is Adam Driver the one from Girls? Yes, mm-hmm. and he played a uh, he played Kylo Ky- Kylo, Kylo Ren. Ren. He's a very versatile actor. He is. I like, I like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely like him. I had an ex boyfriend that looked exactly like him. Oh, we need it to bring him on the show. Exactly. No. <laughs> we can do a There's social a reason experiment. We can do a social why experiment. Why he's an ex boyfriend. All right, right. I, I don't you. ever want to revisit that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Hence why I bring it up. Right. But, um. Hey, I'm drunk. I'm going to say know, whatever comes to mind. The movie was good. 
it was good. I, I liked it. I think it's one of Spike Lee's um, best. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, you, oh, one of? Okay, you didn't say the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Okay. Do the Right Thing is the best. Oh, yeah, for sure. But um, I think it's one of his best. Uh, I, I love the ending, man. It, it, it took me back to school days, the wake-up mm-hmm. ending with yeah. that one. It was powerful. Yeah. So um, with that being said, I um, I want I want to put it in my hip-hop corner today. I wish mm-hmm. Shayna was here because I want to mm-hmm. talk about Lupe Fiasco's new album. I didn't I'm get to Shana hear it. Now. So, Drogue Ass uh, Wave came out, yeah. and have you heard Lupe Fiasco's Lasers? No. Okay, yeah. so that's if you, know the, if you know the story behind that album, when he was signed at Atlantic Records, they totally compromised him to make pop music for Lasers. Mm. So, it was a totally compromised Lupe. Mm-hmm. This album is an inverse Lupe, where he's totally uncompromised. Oh. So, it's, it's, that's both a good and a bad thing. I mean, because it's like it's 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 all a Lupe just yeah. just thrown at you, and it's yeah. a very dense album. It has a lot of complex lyricism. Um, he has two songs dedicated to uh, two um, young infants who were killed before they even turned ten. Wow. Uh, two different incidents, two different regions. Um, one is um, dedicated to um, Alan Curdy. The other one is dedicated to hold on, let me see what his name is. Um, John. Jo- jo- Jonila Watkins. Mm-hmm. So one song is called Alan Forever. One song is called Jonila Forever, and it talks about these pe- if these two kids grew up before they were just you know so wrongfully shot down at a, yeah. or killed at a young age. It's a very dense album. It is like it, it's not something you can listen to on the go. You got to sit down and really listen to his words and look up the lyrics and stuff like that. It's a yeah. uh, it's a very dense piece of work. I want to hear what Shana has to say about it. But one more thing, I started watching Maniac on Netflix. <laughs> okay. Jonah Hill and Emma Stone, I love it. Okay, but I, but to go back to the Lupe album, it's twenty four tracks. Twenty four tracks. Twenty four tracks. Okay, it's a very dense album. Yeah, that's it a is. lot. Uh, it's gonna take you some time to get through. Yeah, at least yeah. to, to to definitely internalize. But I recommend that. I recommend Maniac on Netflix. Nice. Um, yeah, it's about. I don't want to give too much away, but it's about these two people who have been diagnosed with certain conditions. Mm-hmm. They take a pill and. Weird stuff starts happening. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that. I haven't really seen anything personally this week, so I'm going to try to definitely watch Maniacs and see what I uh, see what it's about. So, this brings me to a happy moment. We get to see drunk Nicole in action. Nicole wants to smoke a cig before we start her story. You get me drunk. I'm going to want to do a bunch of different <laughs> things than what I agreed to. <laughs> That's I wish it. we could see her smoke the cig here, but I know you know we can't. We can't. <laughs> we can't. So what, you want you want to bullshit for about five to ten minutes? Yeah, I'll let you guys do that. So okay. I can do that. I gotta get ready. Minutes. Okay, yeah, go get yourself. Are you sure? Please yourself tell me. Oh, you guys are gentlemen. Please tell me for five to ten minutes. All right, you can go, Nicole. <laughs> why you love the lion so much? And why? Right. You're oh, ditching, okay, yeah, I don't uh, want to be. And, and I'm going to need. Why you're ditching my dinner for this? All right, I'm going to need Randy's Randy's help for this um, as nah, well. Nah, um, you don't, you don't. The Detroit Lions are the most pathetic yet exciting. <laughs> Pathetic yet exciting team the city of Detroit has to offer. Uh, we, we <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you. They are playing a, a game, a must-win game tonight. You know, it's, it's really only, uh, what, they're 0-2 right now? So this is a game that they must win, and it's a game that I must see. Listen, if they win, great. But if they don't, I'm yeah. not going to be surprised, man. They're probably going to gonna lose. Uh, this brings the – oh. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll be on the lookout. Right. This, this brings up a greater question than I have. Yeah. About the state of Detroit teams, mm-hmm. what's going on? Like all of our teams from t- from the the Lions, the Pistons, right, the put Red this Wings. On the other ones. Listen, listen, listen. Don't put this on the Pistons no. and Red Wings. We uh, we 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 got good legacies with them. Don't bring them into this. But, Don't bring the Tigers into this. But this era of our history right now, I'm talking about like the past three to five years, have been the worst for every team that we have in the city of Detroit. People have bad. People have, uh, you know, declines. People have yeah. uh, bad eras. You know, we're just in the bad era right now. I still I believe know. in in Detroit. Yeah, I, you know, I'm I'm trying, man. I, I'm I'm giving. I'm a faithful. I'm a diehard. We but all know where it stems from with the Lions, man. It has a that? curse. I don't believe that curse. They sold man. that player or whatever or something like that. Oh yeah, back in like the fifties or something like that. Randy knows who we're talking about. Yeah. What is the? You don't, you're not no, a sports person. Know. What's a sport? <laughs> Wait, what? What do you? Uh, what are? What are your interests? You know, he... superhero TV shows. Oh, I don't know. Shoot. Okay, so there was a superhero once upon a time called Barry Sanders. Yeah, <laughs> and he was great on the field. You know what I mean? He so, could fly. Yeah, he could fly. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I think we have a curse, man. Like, I really think you should come to this dinner. I, I think it's a mentality that we have. Um, there's so much negativity around 
the, the Detroit Lions that people don't believe. That lack of hope, that lack of belief leads to, to, to apathy. It's not that I don't believe. It's that I'm just saying, like, I ain't going to be surprised if they lose. I got a feeling, though, man. I usually have feelings with my sports teams. Like, last night with, with Michigan State, we took on um, Indiana. I was like, man, we got this game. I got a – I just know. I, I got this sense. Once upon a time, I called you a leftist apologist. <laughs> and we were talking about Samantha B. and what she said about, uh, was it Ivanka Trump or was it the daughter? I think it was, uh, ooh, I think it might have been the daughter. It might have been the daughter. Yeah. And we compared it to Roseanne and her tweets. And I said, well, there should be equal punishment here. And you he was like, I don't know. And I'm like, <laughs> now, right now, I think you're a Lions apologist. I, I am a Lions I, apologist, man. A Lions I'm, a, I'm a slappy. It's just because, you know, when this is the only team that you have. Like, some states got multiple teams. Like, New York has, like, three or four teams where you can root for. For us in Michigan, we only get the Lions. So, it's almost like you, you have to you have to give it your all. You got to be that, that fanatic um, with the team because this is our hometown team. And this is our home state, our home city team. I don't understand people who are so quick to just be like, you know what? The Lions suck. I hate that. And so, for me, and I'm going to go in my soapbox a little bit right now. For me... The Detroit Lions have been a staple of my life. Meaning, as a kid, growing up, I used to watch all the games, Barry Sanders back in the day. All right, let's cut the BS. Well, oh, Nicole's oh, oh, back. Nicole's like, back. End it. All right. End the Lions talk. Nicole is back. All right. Sorry. She's guys. drunk. Yes. She's going to talk about some history. All right. Uh, <laughs> some drunk true crime history. Shout out to drunk history. Hey. Um, shout out to Drunk History. Also, I'm going to apologize to Mary Vincent and her family before I <laughs> butcher her survival story. But I do appreciate how she got through and made it through all this horrifying events that you can never imagine putting yourself through and coming out in a good end at the end of the day. Mary. It sounded bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just Already butchered it. it. Just push through it. Go, go, go for Pushing it. Pushing through it. All right. So. I'm here to tell the story about Mary Vincent. It's a survival story. Mm. She was 15 years old in 1978 when she had this horrific, terrifying event happen to her. So at 15, you know how stupid you can be and how you time. think you're right all the time, mm. even though people are telling you you're wrong. This is basically kind of that story. Um, Mary right. Vincent. You're towing the line between the fence up here. Let's, let's, let's just, just you're towing the line. <laughs> I know. All right. But Mary Vincent, um, she grew up in Las Vegas with her parents. Her mom dealt cards, and her dad uh, was one of those people who fixed the machines at the casino. Mm -hmm. And that's how she grew up. And she was 15, thought she knew better, and had a boyfriend who lived in California. So she was constantly hitchhiking between Las Vegas and California with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And at some point, her boyfriend ended up going to jail for rape. Oh. And she had nowhere to go. She was in California at this time. So she decided she was going to hitchhike back from California to back to Reno, Nevada, to be with her grandfather and start living out her life. She was a good dancer. She she could do a lot of amazing things. And when I say dancer, I meant like ballet dancer. Oh, not okay. Okay. not right. a stripper. Okay. In Las Vegas, because that's very, right. That's very common. Showgirls, right? Yeah. yeah, that's what they do. Um, I'm wasted, <laughs> but I'm gonna push keep, through keep with the story. Through. So eventually, she's hitchhiking, and 1978 was a weird time. You could hitchhike and not be too concerned about the consequences of it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so they were hitchhiking. She was hitchhiking with a bunch of different groups of hitchhikers. I'm gonna burp. No, don't don't vomit. Just go ahead and do I'm it. Not, that was a little my little burp. Just unfilter Nicole. Let's go. You got me drunk. This is how <laughs> drunk history works. Someone burps or throws up at some point. I'm not gonna throw up, Randy. Don't Ugh. worry about me. <laughs> 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 um, so they're hitchhiking, and this guy pulls up in a van, big ass, bright blue, like light blue van, and it's a very old man, hmm. and he stops and he's like, "All right." I'm only going to take her oh. wherever she wants to go. They did. He didn't want to take any of the other. I think there was three other hitchhikers with her. Oh. And she's like, all right. And the other Stupid. hitchhikers are like, hey, this is kind of shady. He's got a really big van <laughs> and nobody else is in it. Probably he's got candy. so many empty seats and he's only offering to take you. Oh. And you might want to be a little wary about this, Mary. 
But she said, you know, no, he looks like a grandpa. I'm sure he'll be fine. So like, is the grandpa. Innocent right. man. So That's how it goes. It yeah. is. So Mary gets in the van and leaves the other hitchhikers behind. And she gets comfortable. She, there's one really um, kind of concerning point that she did take note of, but apparently didn't take note of enough. Um, she was smoking a cigarette and she sneezed in the van. And... The grandpa-looking guy, who is Lawrence, Lawrence, God damn it, Singleton, that's his name. Okay. Lawrence Singleton um, reached over and touched her on the back of her neck and said, "Oh, are you getting sick, darling? Oh. Some guy you don't know, yeah, touching you in that way." And she thought that was a little concerning, but you know, she finished her cigarette and ended up going to sleep. So she wakes up and she notices that they're going in the opposite opposite direction. Mm -hmm. They should have been heading west, and she realizes that they're going east. Mm -hmm. And so she turns to him and she's like, "Oh my God, where are you going? You're going the wrong way." And he turns around and he's like, "Oh, it was an honest mistake. I wasn't paying attention. You know, I'm tired. I've been driving a lot. I'm gonna turn around right now." So he turns around and she's like, "All right, that's fine." Well. Eventually, um, I believe she falls asleep again. That's, that's where she went wrong. Well, she was hitchhiking a lot, too, and that can make you a little tired, I mm. guess. But, yeah, yes. she went wrong necessarily. And she wakes up, and she's tied up by her wrist and her ankles and in the back of the van. No, 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 I'm telling the story wrong already. I know I am. No, he said it was an honest mistake. <laughs> you had one job, Cole. I know one I did. <laughs> you got, I'm drunk, okay? All right. But I, I know now. I All know. right, honest mistake. When she mentioned that they were going the wrong way to him, he said he was an honest man. He didn't mean to make that mistake. So he tells her, like, okay, well, I'm going to stop the car anyway because I have to go pee. And she's like, okay. And she looks down and she notices that her right shoe is untied. And in her brain, she's thinking... I'm going to tie this shoe because this situation's kind of getting a little sketchy. If I tie my shoe, I can run away. As she bends down to tie her shoe, he clubs her in the head mm -hmm. and she blacks out. And that's when she wakes up with her wrist and her ankles tied up in the back of the van. Okay. And so Lauren Sterling, this old Singleton. Singleton. That's right, Singleton. Yep. yep. Yeah. See? Told you, was gonna fuck this up. All right. no. Lauren Singleton at this moment decides, like, ties her up and does all these things, and she wakes up to him raping her. And while he's raping her, he's like stopping in between it and pouring alcohol down her throat, mm. like getting her wasted, getting her inebriated, so she can't really, you know, do anything to help herself. Kind of making mm. it a little more difficult on her. So. From what I read, he raped her for a really excruciating long time. Like, it was, like, one of that situations as a woman where you're like, ugh, is this ever going to end? Uh, you know, but imagine people, feeling that when you're raped. You know, people usually choose lighthearted stories to tell drunk. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of... Or this is it's depressing. It's morbid. I'm like, I know. I told you I'm going to... This <laughs> might never oh. air. We should probably never air this. No, we're going to air this. Air. It's okay. already on Facebook Live. All right. All right go so so they, they kept going. Um, uh, all right. So it gets to a point at one point where, like, you know, she's crying and screaming, please let me go. Like, stop. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, please free me. And he says, okay, you want to be free? I'll free you. So he unties her, unties her ankles. And at that point when she's getting ready to run away, he takes a hatchet and he chops off her left arm. Oh my God. And at this whole point while he's like, because it takes a couple hacks. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. Takes a couple hacks and finally gets that one arm off. She has her other arm, like, grabbing him and trying to escape and, like, push him away so he's not hacking off that arm. And from her story, she remembers hanging on to him and all of a sudden falling back. He had hacked off the other arm that was grabbed onto him. And I she remembers... this isn't even the, the, the high point of the not. violence. She remembers falling back and seeing him, like, kind of wiggling and trying to get something off of him. It was her other arm that was gripping on him. It was, like, leached onto his other arm. So finally he gets it off. And she's still crying and pleading, like, please just let me go. 
I cannot, please, just stop. So he goes, okay, you want to be let go? I'm going to let you go. So Lauren Singleton pulls Mary to the end of a canyon and throws her 30 feet down. And this woman wakes up in like a ravine with mud like all around her. And she wakes up and she decides to like pack all of her wounds, like her little stubby arms with mud to keep the blood from. Wait, how does she do it when she doesn't have any oh. other arms? To, does she like put her she nubs? She kind of like the... put her nubs in the, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. God. Digs them in there to pack the bleeding and starts like crawling her way out of a 30 foot ravine. Mm. And she does come across, like she finally gets to the highway and she comes across like two men in a, ver- um, a convertible. In, in the story I read, they looked like they could have been on in their honeymoon, so yeah. good for them. Yeah. But they saw her, and it's like some freakish scene if you see Mary Vincent at this point. She's covered in blood. She's right. naked. By the way, I didn't bring that up. She has no clothes on right. at all because he was raping her, and she's just got mud and blood all over her, no arms. Oh. So as a random couple driving by... When you see that, you're either going to freak out mm. and drive really quickly away or do what you can to help her. Mm. That couple f- freaked the fuck out and drove away. But um, another couple, which was a male and a female, ended up seeing her. I don't know how to respond to all this. Me neither. I'm trying to think of a <laughs> way like, to sort I'm, of... I'm trying to think of an appropriate response to make, but okay, yeah. go ahead. Another couple, a man and a female, who were actually... For sure, on their honeymoon, okay, drove by and saw her, and they ended up getting her in the car, calling the police, and they had a helicopter airlift her from where the closest they could get to bring her to a hospital. Mm. And she ended up losing both of her arms. That's not the end of the story, though. Okay. So she's got these nubby arms, and she had to. Um, the police showed up. And she told, she gave a really apparently descriptive um, comparison to Lawrence Sterling Singleton. Is it Sterling Singleton it's, or Lawrence it's Singleton? It's Singleton. Okay. okay. Um, Do you have a Sterling in your life? <laughs> I lived in Sterling Heights. Oh, there you go. Oh, uh, okay. All right. But, um, so she gave a really descriptive um, description of Lawrence Singleton. And they ended up finding him, like, a couple days later. They found him, but since because it was 1978, the criminal justice system was kind of, it's still kind of fucked up, but it was pretty fucked up. Mm-hmm. Lauren Singleton ended up getting sentenced. By the way, before he got sentenced, he um he testified that Mary Vincent was a 10-cent prostitute okay. and that she's the one who actually raped him. And he hurt her out of self-defense. And that's the long story short, is he tried to defend himself. Mm. Um, So after two testimony, I I think they went to court twice, Mary Vincent did, to testify against Lawrence Singleton. And eventually he did get sentenced. He got sentenced to 16 years in prison. Mm. But at the time, if you behaved well, and for every time you worked a day in prison... They would take a day off your sentence. So Lawrence Singleton actually ended up getting off after eight years. Wow. Mm. And within those eight years, or after he got off, uh, within that time frame, he ended up murdering another woman. Mm. And that's where we're going to lead into the flaws of the criminal justice system. What, what, What did he get for that? Um, that's something I did not check on. That that's a good question. I can look it up. Hopefully he's you alive. Know what? And I, I just I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm I'm I don't know what to say. I'm I'm disturbed. I'm disillusioned. Um, I think this was uh, we we call this a drunken retelling of a true horror story. Yeah. By Nicole. And I think uh. Good job, Nicole. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I think, where's that, where's that voice machine oh, yeah. at? that does the applause and all that? Oh, I think I found it. Where's? Well, hold up. Let's do a moment of silence to just dedicate Nicole for getting through that because yeah. God bless her. You know. Yeah, God I've bless been her. drinking since ten thirty and I want to die. Please don't oh, die. Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> 
There you go. <laughs> Here, I got you. I got you. Hey, there we go. That's even better. Thank you, Nicole. It's like, man, you know, she, I don't think she should have told that drunk, uh, sweetie. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh. See, that's why that was my concern to you, though. I was like, it's, it's a survival story, yeah. but... I don't want to disrespect anyone by telling it really drunk and getting things wrong. So is she still alive by any chance? Yeah, she is. So th- this is, there's some cautionary tales within this. First off, try not to hitchhike. Right. If you do, don't hitchhike and g- jump into a car with an old man who is in a van by himself. It was kind of creepy. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, try to, he try went to pack on your arms with. to murder a woman in Florida in 1997. Yeah. But nope, he's, he's dead. He died in 2001 of cancer before the sentence could carry out. So. Oh, he avoided that too. Yeah. Well, no, he didn't get off. He didn't get off easy. That's karma right there. Oh, he looks so creepy. Cancer Those is, eyebrows, oh right? Oh, my God. Cancer, things are thick. cancer is a monster to deal with, I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So. Criminal justice uh, reform. <laughs> Eric doesn't. Hey, this is the first time I've seen Eric speechless. Like, I uh, don't know what that, to say. That was interesting, <laughs> right there. So, um, all right, I'm gonna just start it off like this, uh, Nicole. Um, what What do you think of the criminal justice system today? Like, how do you think it's improved, and how do you think we got a long ways to go? We have a lot of long ways to go. Um, if Eric, I don't think you know this. Anthony might know that. I actually do have no associates in criminal justice. Mm. I originally went to school to be a probation officer, and then I decided I didn't want to do that for Mm. the rest of my life. Um, There's a lot of downfalls. I think a lot of it has to do with marijuana at the time, too, right now. Mm. There's a lot of people in prison where they could be making room for people like Lawrence Singleton to stay in prison longer. Because they actually murdered someone. Yeah. Compared to people who are in jail for, or prison for, you know, selling marijuana, which has not been proven to murder anybody. Or possession. Yeah. Yeah. It's just ridiculous when we have, there's so many psychopaths and um, sociopaths out there who are committing these real crimes and somehow still escaping prison at the end of the day. And getting to commit these crimes again. I think they don't put enough money into researching a little bit more into the people who could always be a danger to society. Mm. I agree with that. I think the criminal justice system, in its essence, is a business. And it thrives off of the um, exploitation of people, specifically those who are poor. And uh, when you look at laws such as like the strict laws in, within regards to marijuana and sort of the sentencing, sentencing, sentencing of, of individuals um, with marijuana cases, when half of the states have legalized it, well, not half, but a good amount of states have legalized marijuana, um, but you're starting to see that they're still disproportionately incriminating poor people, right? Um, that's an issue. And then you also have to look at people's access to attorneys like if you have a public defender nine times out of ten you're just probably going to plead guilty as opposed to someone who has a um, yeah, that's private attorney as well what they're going to tell you to do right right and so typically those who get public defenders are those who are poor and can't afford it in this case i'm not sure what a type of attorney he had but he must have had a pretty good attorney uh, to only get eight years for that um but again it shows you that they, it doesn't well, really was it the attorney or was it the time could have yeah it could have been the i think it both had to do with it at the yeah. end of the day. Okay. Because the 70s, I'm not sure the legal system in the 70s, but I'm sure that it wasn't as strict as it was today. I think one of the saddest things about the justice system is that once you're in the system, you know, whether you're guilty or innocent, whether you're guilty and you've redeemed yourself or whatever, it's hard to get out of it. Yeah. There's not many avenues to get yourself out of the system once you're in. And there's a problem there because it's mm-hmm. a paradox. It's an unfair mm-hmm. paradox against, you know, the underprivileged, and people who have truly redeemed themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched the show on Netflix. I think I told you about it last week. It's called First and Last. And it talks about individuals' first day in jail and then their last day in jail. Um, and sort of it highlights their experiences. And a lot of times those people who are coming out of the prison and jail systems, they haven't been successfully re- rehabilitated. <coughs> like half the people, they end up going back to jail for doing what they did previously. Um, so all you're doing is just providing them with these cages, lock them in cages, and then assuming that this is going to correct their behavior. But all it's doing is just creating further 
um, people who, with more issue, issues coming out than when it came in. So that's a problem. Um, also, that show as well, it does a great job of highlighting sort of the some of the racial imbalances. Like so I'm showing like a young black kid who um, got put over something stupid, like something like marijuana or something. And he got charged for like, uh, what was it? He was in there for like uh, 90 days for like marijuana possession, which really makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense. What is the name of the man um, who had the Khalif Browder? Oh, yeah. I think that's a great tale right there. It is. Man who was sent to prison who was innocent. Yep. And after he was released, you know, after, you know, being an activist for what happened and standing up for how he was wronged, mm-hmm. he got depressed mm-hmm. and he ended up committing suicide. Am, am I right? That's that's the truth. Yeah. There are lasting implications to how flawed this system is. Mm-hmm. And the issue, too, is that we don't – other countries – truly rehabilitate their individuals. Like, I, I was looking at the prison system in, like, Sweden or something. It was one of the European countries. They're li- literally, like, almost like college campuses. Like, these people are going to jail, but they're also learning skilled trades. They're learning how to sort of cope with their anger. They're truly being re- rehabilitated. So once they finally leave, mm-hmm. they're actually contributing members to the society. Whereas for us, we stigmatize these individuals who went to prison or jail, and we pretty much cast them off. Like, like once they get out, you know, they're they're no longer humans in our eyes. Right. But some of them are being put in pl- into prison for uh, false accusations. And that's the that's the worst part. For like this guy, the Singleton guy, he deserves to be in jail for life. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, at that time, it didn't work out that way. No, he just died instead. Right, he just died instead. So there's people who truly deserve to be there. But there are mm-hmm. thousands of individuals who are falsely accused um, all the time. Of course. Who don't have the representation, who are given these horrible uh, public defenders who just tell them to plead guilty and that's it and you, and you always get the smart ass response well everybody's innocent in Sawshank. right exactly you yeah know? it's true and i think that we have to sort of re- readjust what it means to truly incarcerate someone and sort of rehabilitate them in our system I got another question, and this is strictly for Nicole. I gotta, I gotta understand, like what, what makes you so? In- I don't know if you touched on this uh, during our um, desensitized uh, episode about true crime TV. What makes you so interested about true crime? Like what, what intrigues you about it? It makes you aware, and it makes you realize. It does. It makes you see who um, the flaws are at. Mm. You know, um, there's always gonna be messed up people everywhere you go who are willing to commit these crimes and hurt people and I always wanted to be that person who would have something to do with helping keeping these people away from the good people Mm. but unfortunately at the end of the day there's not enough of us there's not enough of opinion there's not enough of a lot of things that can prevent these you know criminals from coming out of the woodworks and committing these crimes to, you know, kill somebody or, you know, dispense heroin. Cause at the end of the day, that, that kills a lot of people, right. you know, there's just not enough. There's, I have no words for the criminal justice system. It's kind of like, and I'm really drunk and I hope this sounds no, understandable. You, you sound like you're coming down. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> I I am a little bit, but um, in you know, I want to compare it to surgery. In surgery, you open somebody up and you try to figure out what's wrong with them, and you can try to figure out the best way to give them the most best quality of life they could have. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, that's what the criminal justice system is supposed to do: is to find these criminals, bring them back down to giving them the best quality of life they could have without hurting another human and it goes both ways for the victims and for the you know the people who commit these crimes Mm -hmm. and i i've always had this obsession with it and i've always been obsessed with learning like where they come from when they do this and all those things okay all right that was a that was a nice assessment that was i mean overall when it comes down to justice at least in this country, we try to, you know, we say that justice is blind, you know, that regardless of who you are, where you come from, the the hand of law is equal, right? But it's based off of a system that is imperfect, right? They're, they're flawed individuals. Like, just as people, we have biases. They're, we just, we, we, aren't, we aren't perfect, so we make mistakes. 
So when you're dealing with, with a system that's supposed to intend to, to help those who are innocent, but you have flawed people who are running it, you know, what? there's no way that it can be perfect. There's no way that we're going to have, in Mary Vince's case, that she'll be ju- there'll be justice across the board because it's just, it's tainted by the individuals. I mean, do you agree? I agree. I agree. So what in your in your mind, what does a perfect criminal justice system look like? There's no telling. Honestly, we can put all the money we want into the criminal justice system, but you know, at the same time you're going to come across cops who are kind of a little twisted and they mm-hmm. work for the other side and you know, or they're racist or there's uh, it's hard to say. It kind of comes back down to, you know, social justification. Nope. I'm too drunk to have this conversation now. No, I, I mean, mean you, well, you, you were coming good. down a bit. You had you touched on some good points. You you tried. Um, <laughs> I don't you. think I don't think justice should be totally blind. It shouldn't. I, I think that's a conflicting statement. Yeah. I just I read about a lot of cases where you know the cops don't do all they can do. Because that's part of the problem when you're blind. I mean, I understand being blind to, okay, this person's a cop. He, 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 mm-hmm. He's to protect and serve us. Go easy on him. No, you should, be, you should be a little blind to that and treat him as equal as everyone else. Right. But at the same time, I'm not saying be sensitive, but understand the certain like um, environments people are coming from yeah. and the injustices in those environments and why certain things may be done or why, certain, or why people are caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. Strictly by coincidence or by being pulled out by prejudice, um, you know, feelings, you know, mm. not be sensitive, but be aware. Yeah, there's nuances to everything. Like every every case isn't cut and dry like that. Sometimes you have to look at the, the like I said, the environmental factors that, that sort of led and contribute to that. So if you know you got a 16 year old kid who grew up real poor, who's, who's just trying to make it, he doesn't have parents in his life and he makes a mistake and slips up. Why give that, st- that kid the, the maximum sentence when you know you know that this is going to ruin his life forever. I think, I think the figurative. I don't know if that's the right word. I think Lady Justice needs to keep one eye open. Yeah, I think that's what needs to happen here. And I know I'm speaking in very <coughs> broad terms, but in a way, I I pretty much am summarizing how I feel. I think there needs to be one eye open. But then, whose perspective is Lady Justice? Sort of, it goes case by case. Because again, but again, if if it's not blind. Again, the, what, I'm, what I'm arguing is that it's not blind currently, and that with it being not blind, um, sort of our, our biases, whether it's um, explicit or implicit biases, are, are sort of weighing in on decisions. So you're saying, your, your counter-argument is that it shouldn't, it shouldn't be blind to begin with. It should be always sort of looking at issues um, or looking at like the nuances within you know, justice. But what if you have someone, but what if you, what if you have people who, aren't looking out for the best interests of, you know, those who are disenfranchised or, you know, those who have, don't have money or the voice. I mean, because so there, it, it could still be influenced by bad actors. If that, that's what I'm saying. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, people have biases. Money just, does. Money has a lot to do with the criminal justice system. Oh, a ton. You can get out of, you know, um, like Robert, he killed Bonnie Lee Blakely. Robert mm-hmm. Blake did. And um, he got away with it. Yeah. You know, and he had a lot of money. And But if you look, yeah, yeah, if you look at their background and all the evidence that points towards them, at the end of the day, they had enough money to get out of this situation. Mm. Like that, uh, was that the affluenza case? Y'all remember that? Yeah, I remember that one. What what happened? Was it the, uh, was he like drunk driving or something? I believe it was something along those lines, and he claimed to have affluenza, meaning I'm so privileged, I don't take other people's lives into account. I'm in my own bubble. Please help me. <laughs> and that actually benefited to him not getting <laughs> such a harsh sentence. That's crazy. I don't understand that at all. My God. Money talks, man. Money, Money does talks. talk. But in cases like like Mary, Mary Vincent, um, I, I have a feeling that it, it's sort of, and I know the 70s were a different time, but I think it, it's sort of, Society's view of women as well. It is. It has a lot to do with it. I yeah, mean, she's a very strong woman to get out of that, though. I got to. She I, is. I, I gotta well, say and that. Uh, part of the mm. story I did not mention was she suffered for at least thirty years of her life dealing with the PTSD I of bet. being raped like that, being having her arms chopped off like that. 
she w- suffered from a lot of depression. She's almost, you know, committed suicide a couple of times because that was the burden she had to carry after that happened. Mm-hmm. And especially, like, I can never put myself in Mary Vincent's shoes, but I can imagine if you were to go through something like that mm-hmm. and then see the person who did that to you get out of prison after eight years and eventually mm-hmm. commit that crime. Yeah. At a worser level. Worser is not a word. I was, was going to say it. It's all right. We, we get the gist <laughs> of what you're saying. We, we understand. In an even worse level. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's upsetting. That can definitely mess with your head. Yeah. And I'm sure the fact that she theoretically feared that she could run into him again. Well, right? oh, I didn't mention this either. Um, so when during one of the court trials, when they were going through convicting Lawrence Singleton... He um, did turn to Mary Vincent, and he mouthed towards her, this isn't the end. Oh, wow. I'm going to kill you at the end of the day. Uh, you're, my sole purpose in life is to murder you now. Okay. He, he mouthed this to her, or he actually said it? He said something along the lines like, it's not over. I'm going to kill you. Uh, it, it. He put it in a very short term. I didn't. Cause so this, this is documented. He said this in front of the lawyers and everybody. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Mm. That's wow. a problem. It's a problem when you can and say that in the courtroom. After run. eight years, they said, "Nope, he was a model citizen in prison. He can go." So why mm-hmm. let him go and have Charles Manson stay in? Char- Charles Manson. Yeah. Charles deserved to stay in. He's crazy. Yeah, but this guy's crazy too. Yeah. Well, he just chopped the lady's well, arms off. Like, right. Are crazy. I mean, so in this situation, so you said the defense they claimed that she was a prostitute. And he Lawrence, she raped Lawrence Singleton claimed okay. that she was a, a ten cent prostitute, but st- and that she was like pretty much you know offering to give him what he took from her, oh my God. and you know she threatened to kill him with to get the money back or whatever it was. Like he tried to put the blame on her, mm. essentially. The victim blaming, huh? No, but it's it, it's so it's so strange that. He was able to get off. Well, not necessarily get off. He still served time. But that sounds like such a a, a, a loosey goosey defense. Like, oh, she was she raped me. And, well, and another thing and though, she, there was like so when he got sentenced and got out of prison, a lot of um, states had issues with it. Like, mm-hmm. um, he was supposed to be let off in California, and California mm-hmm. was like, "Fuck no, we don't want him living here with us." Mm-hmm. And they signed a petition. So they signed the petition. And he had a very difficult fi- like time like being on parole and yeah. finding somewhere to live. Because mm-hmm. every time he would try to move to a dis- different state to live, there would be these crazy petition signs like, no, he doesn't deserve to be here. Good. But the criminal justice system ended up letting him live on um, the San Quentin prison grounds in a trailer mm-hmm. until he was off of parole. And that's when he eventually... He could move to Florida with nobody, yeah. you know, fighting against it anymore. There was no laws against him moving to Florida. Yeah. So he moves to Florida and kills a bitch. That's a a woman. Sorry. I'm drunk. <laughs> it's all right. We got to just All the crazy people live in Florida though. That's that's the That that's it. They size. all the, the alligators and the old people <laughs> all live there and they're all crazy. All right. Um I think we should uh give some final thoughts here. I mean, Eric, you you wanna go first or um, all right, I will say, in this situation, justice has failed people on multiple levels, those mm-hmm. who are accused of crimes and those who are victims of crimes. Um, and there needs to be substantive change, substantive change that happens in order for us to really try to balance this out. How that's going to happen and sort of what we do to sort of adjust this, who knows? Um, but we definitely ne- need to figure out or hope things like that never happen again. And I feel like that that probably won't happen again ever because it was the seventies. Yeah, well, um, exactly. I mean, a lot of people don't necessarily, you know, result right. in hitchhiking like they did back in the seventies. Right. But I'm sure there are sort of similar circumstances or situations that have happened since then. Um, so we just got to do a better job. We need we need to, you know, wake up. You know, talk to our, our politicians about changing legislation as come as it relates to um, criminal justice reform, and you know, keep Make sure our voices are heard. Hmm. Nicole, any more thoughts? 
the criminal justice system is kind of shitty. And I only know that because I watch a lot of true crime stories that make <laughs> me believe that. Mm-hmm. It all it could also be, you know, it has a lot to do with uh what we're advertised and like we talked about a couple weeks ago, are we sensitive to news now? Like are we sensitive to what's going on in America? We glorify um, all the terrible things that are happening right now. I mean, think about it. There are so many YouTube channels right now that feel like they're doing a good job bringing up missing people cases to help spread the word so, you know, we can find someone who is legitimately missing. But at the same time, at the end of the day, it also glorifies it. Yeah, yeah, I do think that's a... that that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I never thought about it that way. It does glorify it. I mean, it is beneficial, but it is also a little bit. I don't think the glorifying it comes to a um. Not in a bad intention at right, all. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I never yeah, thought about yeah, that's, that. Yeah, that's true. I that's think I think you don't hit on something. That's perspective. Right, this whole I didn't episode. think about. Yeah, that was one thing. That was one thing you hit on that I never Drunk thought Nicole about. Drunk Nicole is a wizard. She got gems. She's a, she's she, a thing she, of ratchet beauty. <laughs> I've said this. <laughs> Drunk Nicole throwing out gems right now. Yeah. Uh, well, my final thoughts are, you know, peace to Mary Vincent, of course, uh, and Mary Vincent's family. She's still family. alive. She's not dead. That, well, peace anyway. I mean, you know, yeah. she, she lived through that. You know what I mean? She did. And she actually is in a good place now is what I have been reading. And, mm-hmm. you know, she does Wonderful. do a lot. Does she have prosthetics now? Or is she uh, She has two prosthetic okay. arms, and she's learning how to live with them. And mm-hmm. she, I believe she has two children now. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. That's good. Um, Great. She's happy. Good. Lawrence Sterling, a singleton, is dead. <laughs> good, yes, okay. good, good. He died in 2001, like I said, from cancer because mm. he deserved it. Hopefully, he's rotting somewhere in hell. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we tried. Um, we at Can We Talk, a part of Podcast Detroit, tried this something. This was the dark we, version. We, 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 we the tried, dark Nicole drunk version. We tried an experiment today, um, and, and shout out to Drunk History was a, which is a way more you know, which is a way more you know, uplifting, lighthearted show um, <laughs> than what we got today. I think we might be on to something, or I right. think we might have just. Uh, did I'll do something. this again with a happier story. Uh, I, w- I would suggest that if you got, <laughs> if, you, if you um if, if you got any feedback, please Nicole. If you got any feedback for what we for what we heard or what we went through today, let us know. Um, yeah, it was an experiment. Um, God help us. <laughs> Anthony is the one stuck may, with me throughout the rest of the May God have mercy on yourself. I couldn't drive myself like this. This was a great me? episode. Well, this was a episode of Can We Talk. <laughs> <laughs> So may God have mercy on yourself.